in the earlier chapter we studied reflection at plane surfaces you know uh, like reflection from a plane mirror in this case we'll study reflection at spherical surfaces a spherical surface like this you see is formed when you take a sphere and cut it into small parts each part of the sphere can then be used as a mirror so if you cut the sphere such that you make the inside portion of the sphere as the reflecting material then you get a concave mirror so the reflecting surface in a concave mirror is concave in shape as you can see here the center of the sphere from which the piece has been cut is called the center of curvature so this here is the center of curvature the middle point of the piece is called the pole p here and there's a point called focus between the center of curvature and the pole and we'll talk a lot about this point focus later on as we proceed and the line that joins the center of curvature this focus this pole is called the principal axis and what will happen if you don't uh, create a reflecting surface on the inside part of the sphere but what if you create a reflecting surface on the outside part of the sphere then something like this will be formed right as you can see the outside part of the sphere is reflecting in this case again as you can clearly see this is the focus here this is the radius of curvature and this is the pole and this axis as you already know is the principal axis now what we'll really do in this chapter is study exactly what happens to rays when they are incident on a concave mirror and a convex mirror so for example if rays are coming you know like this here what will happen where will these rays go that's what we'll study but before we study all that we'll have to learn about sign conventions you know in case of spherical mirrors mm, there is a very strict rule about which sign to use when so the direction of the incident ray for example is always considered to be positive this means if you are solving any problem and let's say you have to include this focal length here you'll you'll say minus f is the focal length why minus f because the incident ray will always travel towards the right so any distance towards the left will be negative so the distance of the center of curvature here will be indicated as minus r and the distance of the focus from the pole will be minus f similarly this direction here will be positive so if you have to indicate say the height of an image or the height of an object you know if there's an object here for example then you know the height of the object will be written as plus h similarly if the object height is like this you know then its height will be minus h so as you can see the sign convention says that the direction above the principal axis this is the principal axis is positive and the direction below the principal axis is negative there you go now finally let's move on to image formation what happens when a ray strikes a concave mirror or a convex mirror that's what we're finally going to look at light rays incident parallel to the principal axis pass through or seem to be passing through the focal point what this means is that if there are light rays parallel to the principal axis like this they'll pass through the focus in fact the focus of a concave mirror is defined as the point through which light rays pass after reflection if they are initially parallel to the principal axis remember we said that we'll talk about the focus later this is that later and so what will happen in case of a convex mirror if this is your convex mirror here then light rays which are parallel to its principal axis in this case uh will not exactly pass through the focus because the focus will be here 
you know on the other side of the mirror what will happen is they'll seem to pass through the focus they'll be reflected like this so that when you extend these rays backwards our brain automatically does that it extends rays backwards you know it will seem like these rays are coming from the focus so this is what happens in case of a convex mirror to sum it up rays parallel to the principal axis meet at the focus in case of a concave mirror and then they appear to come from the focus in case of a convex mirror the second important rule to find out what happens to the rays after they strike spherical mirrors the light rays incident passing through the focal point become parallel to the principal axis after reflection let's say there's a light ray like this which is passing through the focus and then striking the concave mirror then the reflected ray will become parallel to the principal axis so as you can see this is just the inverse case when you compare it with the previous case in the previous case the incident rays were parallel to the principal axis and the reflected ray was passing through the focus in this case the incident ray is passing through the focus and the, the reflected ray is parallel to the principal axis similarly what will happen in case of a convex mirror this is what will happen here you can see our convex mirror and if this is our principal axis any ray that appears to be passing through the focus that is you know if extended it would pass through the focus if a ray strikes a convex mirror like this then it will become parallel to the principal axis the only difference in case of a convex and concave mirrors is that the rays do not meet at the focus or the rays do not come from the focus they just appear to meet at the focus or they appear to come from the focus so these were two rules for reflection from spherical mirrors what's the third rule light rays incident passing through the center of curvature retrace their original path as i had said before c is the center of the sphere from which this concave mirror has been formed so if there is a light ray you know that's passing through c as it strikes the concave mirror then the reflected ray will be along the same path as that of the incident ray so as you can see here the ray will come like this and it will go back in exactly the same path in case of a convex mirror similarly here its radius of curvature will be like this its center of curvature will be here so now in case of a convex mirror if a ray appears to you know pass through the center of curvature that is doesn't exactly pass through the center of curvature but when you extend the ray if it appears to pass through the center of curvature then the ray will go back like this so if you make sure that the ray is inclined at a certain angle with the principal axis such that it appears to you know pass through the center of curvature in case of a convex mirror the ray will get reflected back like this there's one more rule regarding the reflection of rays from spherical mirrors light rays incident on the pole reflect back forming the same angle from the principal axis if a light ray strikes a concave mirror like this at the pole then this angle of incidence from the principal axis will be the same as the angle of reflection from the principal axis in fact even in case of spherical mirrors the law of reflection you know the angle of incidence being equal to the angle of reflection will still hold so even if you know this incident ray here didn't strike the concave mirror at the pole but let's say it struck the concave mirror here at some point here even then you know if you construct a normal here the angle of incidence will still be equal to the angle of reflection the laws of reflection hold for spherical mirrors also and what will happen in case of a convex mirror you know when an incident ray is striking the mirror at the pole this is what will happen here this is the pole and this is the ray the incident ray so again the ray will get reflected 
such that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. There you go.